so like I was saying, you know, why why did the Lord spoil why did the Lord spoil all of these men? Why did the Lord spoil all of these women, man? The ones that are locked up, right? In the prison houses. Right? So read that again, Isaiah 42, 22. It's the book of Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 22. Read. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. It says this is a people robbed and spoiled. Is the whole earth robbed and spoiled? Right? Is every nation robbed? Is the white man robbed and spoiled? Is the Chinese man robbed and spoiled? No. Let's see what the Lord says. Keep reading. They are, all of them, uh -huh. snared in holes. A lot of these men are snared in holes, man. They've been locked up for crimes they never even committed. Right? Read on. And they are hid in prison houses. We are hid in prison houses, man. We make up, what, 70, 75% of the jail population? But then again, we only make up 13% of America? How is that possible? See, a lot of you black men gotta wake up and understand what's going on in front of your face, man. Right? A lot of people understand that there's injustice going on across America, across this earth. But you never stop and question why. Why are all these bad things happening to us? If God is real, why are all these things happening to the so-called black men, Hispanic men, and Native American? Have you ever questioned that? You've been on this earth for 45 and 50 years, but you never questioned why we get shot down in the street at, at alarming rates, man. You never asked yourself that. Right, keep reading. They are for a prey uh -huh. and none deliver They are for a prey, man. What is a prey? Think about it, man. When a lion, he's looking for that, that antelope, right, or that zebra, that zebra and that antelope, they are prey. Why? Because the lion's gonna kill them. And that's what, that's what America does to the so-called black man and Hispanic man, man. Right? They attack us on all levels. They wanna give you the, the Maxine shot. Right? They're trying to get a thousand barber, black barbershops right now across America to minister, to administer uh, uh, the, the Maxine shot to you guys. Right? But you don't see that. You don't see what America's doing to you. Are you, are you, let me ask you a question, brother. Brother, you got a second? Let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Are you, are you familiar, are you familiar with the Tuskegee experiment? They killing niggas, right? Why they keep killing us then, man? Huh? We superior, but why did why is the Lord letting that happen to us? That, that's true, but we gotta come back and keep the commandments of God. That's why the so-called black man is not treated fairly in America. What about you, brothers? Would you say that America treats us fairly? And, and, but why is that? We gotta question why. The Bible tells us why. You know that, right? Because we don't keep the commandments of God. Right? Hey, when y'all get a chance, I want you to read the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. Read that whole chapter and tell me, do we not fit every curse listed in that in that Bible? Right? When we were in slave ships, when our people were fed and uh, fed to alligators, hung from trees, they castrated us. All of this is recorded in the Bible. They burned our bodies alive, and nobody ever paid for that. Why isn't the church and the pastor talking about vengeance of the Lord? Yes, God is love, but God is also a God of war, a God of vengeance, a God who kills babies and old people. He's the one that ordains evil in the earth. God ordains everything. But the church want to tell you, look to your neighbor and tell him you love him. Yeah, what about the hate of the Lord too? Because there's a nation of people in this Bible that the Lord hates. And I'm going to show you that. Give me Romans 9 and 13. The Bible talks about hate too. The Bible talks about war too. The Bible talks about vengeance too. The Bible talks about revenge too. Why isn't the pastor telling us this, man? Let me give you one scripture before you go. Read that, brother. It's the book of Romans. Chapter 9 and verse 13. Three. As it is written, uh -huh. Jacob, have I loved. Jacob is the 12 tribes of Israel, which we are the people who went into slavery in America, Bahamas, Haiti, Jamaica, South America, Brazil, all of these places. This is the Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel. Read on. But Esau. But who? But Esau. Esau is the progenitor of the so called white man. Let's see what the Bible said about him. Read. Have I hate? Have I what? Have I hate? That's what the Lord said about the so called white man. When you read about the book of Obadiah, it says that he's going to wipe them off the face of the earth. That's what the Lord said, man. That's a future prophecy. The pastor is not telling us the truth according to the Bible. That's why we come out here in the hood, man. We come out in the sticks. We go to the drug dealers, the prostitutes, the pimps, the murderers. We deal with these people. The pastor, Joel Osteen, ain't doing it. T.D. Jakes ain't doing it. We come out here and stand in, in the fear of the Lord before these people to tell them what? You got to come back and keep the commandments of God. 
The reason we went into slavery is because we broke the commandments of God as a nation of people. That's why we live on the bottom right now. We gotta come to the gas station and work for Habib. We gotta work for people that came from the Middle East and we've been here in America all our lives. How is that possible? They can open up a $300,000 business and we get $10 up from a loan from the bank, man. We gotta keep the fear of the Lord, man. Love God, brother. All right? Shalom. Right? That's what we come out here to do, to tell the truth, man. Who else gonna tell that? If we don't give me Psalm 9416. Ain't nobody mad, y'all. I get it. No, I get it. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that, man. Ain't nobody mad. I agree with you, brother. Thank you. Psalm 9416. Take care, man. All right, you too, brother. Drive safe. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 16. Right, read. Who will rise up for me? Read that again. Who will rise up for me? Don't you say, who's going to rise up for the Lord, man? If we don't rise up for the Lord, who's going to do it? If we don't tell homosexuals to stop being gay, who's going to do it? If we don't tell pedoph pedophiles to stop touching children, who's going to do it? If we don't tell niggas to stop killing their brother, who gonna do it? T.D. Jackson ain't coming out here, man. The one you, you tap in on YouTube and you say, yes, that's a good sermon right there, right? Telling you them smooth words. Telling you things that make you feel good on the inside. Give you the goosebumps on the back of your neck, right? Right? But you forgot to read the Bible, man. What's going on, brother? How you doing, man? Let me get five seconds of your time, man. Five, you say you working? You need to be working for the Lord, man. That's yes, right. You working for the wrong people today, man. That's yes, right. Right? How you doing, brother? What's going on with you, man? Can I get five seconds of your time, brother? You said what? You good? You good off the Lord? You believe in the Lord? I don't believe you, brother. Read on. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. Who will rise up for me uh -huh. against the evildoers? Let's just say, who going to rise up for me, uh, for me against the evildoers? The people that hate God, the iniquities, man, right? Who gonna rise up? Who gonna stand up for truth, man? Who gonna stand up and say, yo, what you doing is wrong? Because they try to, when you stand up against homosexuals, man, they try to make you feel like something wrong with you. They try to make you think, yo, you got a condition in your mind, man. Because this is a wicked world. Let me ask you a question, brother. How you doing, man? Would you say that you believe in the Lord? Brother, brother. All right. Hold on. If you believe in the Bible, I believe in the Bible. I I agree. Hold on, hold on, brother. But if you say you believe, if, all right, all right. You've been in this. All right, whatever, man. It's all good. Man. All good, man. All right, come on, brother. Right? Exactly, man. And people don't understand why they robbed this sport. You wonder why we living in these conditions, right? Like, I'm good. I'm a person in the school team. All right. So what that got to do with what? What that got to do with the Bible, man? Right? A lot of people claim to be Christians, followers of Christ. Christ never bought on the Sabbath day. Show me one scripture. Right? Christ never bought on the Sabbath day. Right? Christ didn't eat pork either, brother. You know that, right? All right. So you got if you say you're a Christian, you got to do what Christ did, man. Did Christ not teach? Did Christ not go to the people and teach them? The ones who are brokenhearted, the ones who are sick, the ones who are down and out, right? Did, did he not go to the ones and be a physician unto his people? Right? Read 16 again. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 16. Uh -huh. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Who gonna rise up for, for the Lord against the evildoers? Read on. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? And who gonna stand up against the workers of iniquity? Read on. Unless the most high had my help, uh -huh. had been my help, right? My soul right? had almost dwelt in silence. My soul almost dwelt in silence, man. I almost died unless the Lord had been my help, man. Right? I almost died a couple of times, man. Just like a lot of you out here in these streets, man. Right? You escaping death by the, by, by the, by the hair on your head. Right? You escaping death, but you don't want to... You don't want to seek out the Most High and what he has planned for you, man. How do you forget about the Lord? It's easy to say you believe in the Lord until action is required. Right? It's easy to say you're going to do something until you going you know, the Most High is going to measure you up to what you're saying, man. Right? Because a lot of you are liars. 
A lot of you don't believe in the Lord, man. A lot of you don't love the Lord. A lot of you don't love God, man. What's going on, brother? How you doing, man? Right? You ever seen us before, brother? You know what we out here to do? You know what we out here to do? Give me Isaiah 49 and 5. I'm gonna show you real quick. Right? You from Fort Myers? All right. So what we come out here to do is wake up the children of Israel, which you are, brother. Those people who are involved in the slave trade, those are the real Israelites according to the Bible. The people in Jerusalem and Israel right now are not the real Jews. Those people you see with the little yarmulkes on their head, they're not the real Jews. Because when you go into the Bible and read about your history, you know that we were a great people. Those people are not as great as us, and you know that. Right? So give me Isaiah 49 and 5. Read that. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 49 and verse 5. So this is what we are here to do, brother. Read. And thou, uh -huh. saith the most high, that for me from the womb. So the Lord formed both of us from the womb. He knew us since we came out of the womb. Read on. To be. His servant. So we are the real service of God. What is a servant supposed to do, right? Read on. To bring Jacob. Bring who? To bring Jacob. Jacob is the progenitor of the 12 tribes of Israel, which you are, brother. Read on. Again to him. So we got to bring Jacob again to him. Why is that? Because we left. We left the Lord. We don't keep the commandments anymore, right? We don't love the Lord, right? Because church, all church tell you is that you forgive him for your sins as long as you call on the name of Jesus. And I'm talking about this Jesus, right? This Jesus. This is not Jesus according to the Bible, right? You got to keep the command. If you say you love, do you love God, brother? Give me 2 John 1 and 6. I'm going to show you something real quick. 2 John 1 and 6. I got to show you this, brother. Right? If you say you love, if you say you love the Lord, we got to see what the Bible says. What does the Bible say about loving God? Right? Read on. It's the book of 2 John, chapter 1 and verse 6. Right? Read on. And this is love. This is what? And this is love. This is love. The love of God. Read on. That we walk. After his commandments. That we walk after his commandments. Read on. This is the commandment that ye as ye have heard from the beginning. From the commandments from the very beginning. Those are the commandments we are to keep. Now my question to you. If you say you love God. To love God is to keep the commandments. So what commandments do you keep brother? I will ask you a question but I got to hurry up. Hold on bro. Hold on. Come on now. Uh, I Come on brother. I you can't, all right, can I get five minutes when you come back? Five minutes, brother. All right, all right, you know, right? So, so see, you gotta pull people's card, man, right. you know? Right in the hood, they got something called pulling your card. I'm gonna pull his card, man. Right. I'm gonna see if he really about what he talking, right? If he really walking that walk, man. A lot of people talk the talk, but they don't know how to walk the walk. So we gotta pull that card. We're going to line you up with what the Lord said, man. The Lord said to, to love him is to keep his commandments. It's just like your father or your mother, man, right? If you disobey your mother and your father all day, you don't love them, right? You don't love them, right? You're just doing what, you're just doing what you want to do, right? You, you're disrespecting them, man, just like we're disrespecting the Lord. If you continue to disobey the law, statutes, and commandments, you are disrespecting the Lord, and the Lord hates you for that. Because what the church say, the church say God loves you no matter what. That's not true. That's not true. Let's see. Give me uh, Sirach chapter 12, verse 6. Sirach chapter 12, verse 6. Right? I think it's 12, verse 10. It's like, we'll see. Right? So you can't be out here just, uh, uh, you know, talking, man. You got to be walking too, man. Walking that straight line. Walking that narrow path, man. Because what? You got fire on one side. You got water on the other side, man. A deep water too, man. That's what scriptures compare it to. Right? You could do it the easy way or the hard way, man. What you want to do? Right? Sirach 12 and 10. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 12 and verse, verse 10. Verse 6. Verse 6. Uh -huh. For the most high hated sinners. Read that again. For the most high hated sinners. I thought the Lord don't hate people, man. Right? What about you? You love God, young brother? You love God? You got to keep the commandments, man. Right? See, man, our, our children, our children, we got to make sure that we on top of them, man. Right. You know how they say in the world, you got you to gotta be on their head top, man. You know what I'm saying? Because what this world is, if you don't teach them, the world waiting on them, man. The world is going to teach them how to become a homosexual. The world is going to teach them how to become effeminate men. And we, as, as the children of Israel, as the men of the Lord, we are not to be effeminate men. Right? You don't let everybody dominate over you, man. You don't give your woman and your children power over you in your household, man. That's against the laws of the Heavenly Father. Because guess what? When you do that, man, you're in a world of hurt, man. Right? right? You only cause them destruction to your household. 
right? A lot of men live in misery because of that. Because what? You gave power over to your woman. You gave power to your children. And we are not to do that. But you know what? You, you know you fell off when you read Sirach chapter 27. It tells you unless a man diligently fear the Most High, hold himself in the fear of the Lord, right? If he don't do that, his house shall soon be overthrown. By who? The devil. Satan gonna come play in your house, man. Satan is gonna come play in your house if you do not keep the fear of the Lord. A lot of you wonder why all these bad things happening in your household because Satan is right there, right? When you're on the couch and you're watching TV, Satan is right on the other side watching TV with you, right? So let me ask you a question. Does the Lord hate? Does the Lord hate anybody? Give me one second before you get that card. Read that. It's the book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 12 and verse 6, right? For the most high, hated sinners. Hold on, hold on. Read that. I want them to pay attention to this one. Right? Read, read that again. Verse 6. Uh -huh. For the most high, hated sinners. Oh, hold on, hold on. I thought the Lord don't hate. Read that again. For the most high, hated sinners. No, he loves sinners. Hated sinners. No, he, he caresses sinners. Hated sinners. The most high hated sinners, brother. If we continue to sin, the most high is going to continue to hate you. Right, you might get a little $10 in your pocket, $12 in your pocket, but guess what? The Lord gonna come blowing that money, man. That's why we can't prosper in this world, because we continue to sin. Everybody else don't have this law, statute, and commandment. We, as the children of Israel, we were given the law, statute, and commandments. That's why we get punished for our sins, right? Let me give you one more before you go. Amos 3 and 1. Can I give you a flyer before you go, brother? Let me give you a flyer real quick. I got you. And I'll let you go. It's the book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 3. Right? For this is the love of God. You listening, brother? All right, read it again. For this is the love of God. For this is the love of God. Read on. That we keep his commandments. That we do what? That we keep his commandments. That we keep his commandments. That is the love of God. So now my next question will be, what are the commandments? You got to understand what the commandments are now. Right? We got to make sure we understand. What about you, sis? What are the commandments of God? Right? Do you know? The commandments of God is obeying his word. Tell him, give me all Leviticus 19, 17. Right? Sister, you coming back or not? I can't get five seconds. Right? Read what you got. Leviticus 19, 17. This is the book of Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 17. Uh-huh. Read. Thou shalt not hate. Thy brother in thy heart. Read it again. 
Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Because a lot of people, they hate you, hate the, per the person that been through this. You come, he come from the same hood as you, come from the same sticks as you, came up in a single parent household, done struggle just like you, and you continue to hate your brother in your heart, right? We can't do that. This is one of the commandments. It says you cannot hate your brother in your heart. When you read the scriptures, it says that's compared to murder. Now, when we talk about other nations, that's a different story. But I'm talking about for your people specifically, you are not allowed to hate your brother in your heart. Read on. Thou shall any wise rebuke thy neighbor. And any wise to show love, it is to rebuke thy neighbor. Meaning what? Correct our people. That's why we come out here to correct our people, to show you what's good in the hood, to show you what the love of the Lord is like, to show you that what? You can be corrected, to show you that you can repent for your sins. Give me Acts 3 and 19, right? Acts 3 and 19. These are the things we gotta do to come back and serve the Lord, man. You cannot say you love the Lord and continue to break his commandments every day, man. We can't do that. Right? What's going on, brother? How you doing? Right? Read what you got. This is the book of Acts, chapter 3 and verse 19. Read. Repent ye therefore. Read that again. Repent ye therefore. What does it mean to repent? It means to change your ways, man. Read on. And be converted. And do what? And be converted. So the scriptures say you got to be converted, man. You got to be converted. Right? How you been living wicked for 35 years of your life, man? Until you get jammed up in that situation. Now when you're looking at 35 years of life, now you want to change your life around. Too late. The most I already told you, stop playing around in these streets, man. The most I already told you, you got to come from out of here, man. You got to flee from wickedness, man. And a lot of people don't do that, right? Until you jammed up in that situation. The Lord done gave you a thousand warnings. Now you want to call on the name of the Lord. God, please, if you get me out of this situation, I'll never do it again. And then when he gets you out, you go right back to doing the same thing you was doing, man. Right? Read that again. Repent ye therefore, right? And be converted. Right, read. That your sins may be blotted out. That your sins may be blotted out. Because we know that sinners cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven unless you repent and convert your ways. Right? We know that everybody on this earth got sin. We understand that. Right? But that doesn't mean you live in your wickedness, man. Right. That don't mean you continue to do evil on this earth, man. Right. right? What about you, sis? Would you agree? Would you would you say that a lot of men are acting effeminate these days? Homosexuals acting like women, right? They're not real men. Why is that? Because you don't fear the Lord. You don't keep the commandments, right? What about you, brother? Would you say that you're a real man according to the Bible? Yeah. Do you know what a real man has to do according to the Bible? Oh no, give me one second, brother. One second before you go. Right? 